Okay, Jonathan. So nice to be able to talk to you. Finally. I know, it's so rare. Uh, we never get to be this geeky, though. Especially on Saturdays. That's true. <laughs> um, you, more than almost anyone here in LA, has been responsible for a lot of us who just drive through low-income communities without thinking. Um, you've inspired us to stop and get out of our cars and through a meal engage with people that we may not have ordinarily engaged at the table. Um, give me a little bit about how you think about the show, the Food Insane Circus that the entire country seems to have signed on for, and how there seems to be no linkage at all to any um, understanding of policy or ethic, ethics in regard to food or one's, one's choices? I mean, I'm not sure that I agree with you of the, of the major uh, sort of theme, major themes, the major trends going through the, um, um, I hate to use the word high end, but the the sort of restaurants in the United States that everybody's writing about, a lot of them, I think, are pertinent to us. I mean, one of them is obviously the importance and the emphasis on the importance of you know organic, sustainable, local agriculture. I mean, so, you know, a, a line that I use so often that I was think I have to have a save string on my computer. I can just push a button instead of typing it, and there's a much bigger emphasis on food that is affordable, and I'm obviously I'm talking affordable to you know middle class people with middle class salaries and um, and, and, and baby mortgages, rather than affordable to somebody who's just struggling to get by. I mean, obviously they're not going to be able to eat at some at most of these places, but. People are thinking about those things. They are think they are thinking about who's eating in the restaurant. They're thinking about why people are eating in the restaurant. And there's, especially in Los Angeles, much less emphasis on the sort of cuisine found in restaurants, mostly frequented by very rich people and people who are celebrating anniversaries divisible by five. <laughs> <laughs> then there is on this a sort of food that we may not eat every day, but we aspire to eat every day. We, we want to be able to go and have like the you know, food that was grown by people we know in the farmer's market and prepared in a way that respects the food, respects where it comes from, and respects its flavors rather than tossing a deep fryer and throwing on a soy garlic sizzle. Um, that tries to consume as much of the animals as that we're eating as possible, including you know parts that we just didn't see on menus ten years ago, as opposed to, you know, you know, hack hack me off the New York steak, the filet mignon, and you know, leaving the rest for the rest of the world to eat bacon McDonald's hamburgers or something. People think about the supply chain. People think about where their food is coming from. People are very aware of what they're putting in their bodies now. And I, I think that's only to the good. There is a problem in this country that there are two issues that are basically contradictory. One of the major problems in in the United <laughs> States, especially, is that is that food is too cheap. I mean, chicken should not be sixty nine cents a pound. What has to happen on an industrial level for that chicken to become sixty nine cents a pound is horrific, horrible. I mean, the the quality of the chicken is bad. The level of pollution that it is bad. It's obviously not so good for the chickens. Or the, <laughs> or, or the workers who are dealing with, you know, this sort of horrific antibiotic fog that they have to work in and the sort of repetitive, incredibly stressful, incredibly underpaid um, 
and just beastly sort of work that you people have to do in the in the food processing industry. And so you take and you, you take a situation that in if it's done sustainably all the parts work together in a way that's harmonious, that's good, that makes the food delicious, that makes it <coughs> something that we want to be associated with, and it makes each of them into sort of this science fiction level problem. And yet there are artisan Doritos, or artisan Tostitos, I saw a, um, a commercial for them recently, and I went, wow, you know, the co-opting of of the um, kinder, gentler food chain just yeah. continues apace. But, but the, um, the contradiction, that's, that's one that I'm, I've always been hoping we can address on the Food Policy Council, and one that I see actually progressing in ways in Los Angeles, in ways that I like, is that on the one hand, food is too cheap, and on the other hand, there's still a lot of hungry people. And, there's there's a place in the middle, or the, there's got there's a place to solve both those problems at the same time, and I hope that we're going there. I just like to finish with um, talking a little about Los Angeles. That that Los Angeles County, as most of us know, was the single richest, the single most productive agricultural county in the United States up until the early 70s, which is almost impossible to believe. And you drive through some of the areas that we sometimes call food deserts, and it's remarkable because every, almost everywhere there's like a patch of land, everywhere there's a, uh, a semi-abandoned uh, rail, rail bed, every, every time you see a, a vacant lot, there's something growing in it, and there are and you, and you can go for one for another. The thing, the idea of Los Angeles as an agricultural area is just, it, it can't be kept down. It keeps, it keeps peeking up through the, the gaps. It keeps peeking up through the interstices. And if you drive, uh, with, you know, I've driven with uh, chefs, you know, the, who know who know the area intimately well, and they just know this is where the, this is where the good tree, where the good guava grows. This is where I can get the good nopales. This is where the papayas are unbelievably great. And Los Angeles becomes to them a map of you know incredible agriculture as opposed to just you know concrete streets they used to get from one you, you know bonds to another else. There's there's hope, and I think it's getting better.